So in our last video, we talked about the marine erosion shorelines or the process by which waves will cut through the continental shelf and create that, uh, those wave cut terraces and platforms, which eventually become uh, deposited with sand and become the beaches that we recognize as the, the shoreline. It's important to know that that actually happens in different ways and that, that depends on the actual structure of the ocean and of the shoreline in a specific area. Sometimes rivers will also help the process, both by depositing new, new sand and by eroding the continental shelf from the other side. So on one side you have the river doing erosion, on the other side you have the waves doing erosion and they meet halfway. And then you have the deposition of sand coming from the river and from the erosion of the shoreline. Or other times you have just the wave motion, other times you have just the river motion, and, and not too many waves. And so this can happen in different ways. And I'm not going to get in detail on, on the different variations of the formation of that, but it's good to realize that there is an interaction between depositional shoreline formation and marine shoreline formation and to create the actual beach process. But in the end, the overall take point is that as the waves cut through the continent and rivers also do the same coming from the other side, um, they will deposit sand and cut through the rock and, and make new sand and to, and that way create the shorelines that we that we know about and that that will also depend on the specific type of rock presence of rivers versus not or the speed and power of the waves which are in the area now in the next video we're actually going to talk about how beaches form and how that all that sand gets deposited in the sand line of the oceans and before we do that, I just wanted to, to remind you guys about the concept of headland resistance and bay formation. Remember, we talked about in previous videos about what a headland is, which is basically a piece of rock that is undergoing the same marine erosion shoreline formation that we talked about in the previous video. However, it's more resistant than the surrounding rock. So what you end up getting is, this, is these cuts or bays uh, surrounding the headlands. And this is actually very common. You see here a picture of that next time you go to, to, to uh, a beach. Um, make, see if there's a headland nearby. Um, Florida doesn't really have much of this, but in different parts of Florida you will actually see it. Uh, you will see a stronger cliff that has not getting, gotten eroded and a large beach with a lot of sand deposited. And so basically remember what happens is that waves are going to start to converge against the cliff and become even stronger against the cliff because of the, this area is shallower which is causing a conversion towards the cliff. Meanwhile, this area was cut more, so as a deeper terrace and uh, platform sitting underneath here, and you're going to end up getting divergence of the waves and creating, therefore, a divergence of the energy and, therefore, a quiet beach, which still sees more deposition of sand than the cliff bed will ever see. You can even say that the sand is coming from the erosion of the cliff ends up going into the beach. And so... Uh, this is a peculiar pattern to show up sometimes because of the cliffs, if the cliff is made up of a stronger material than the actual beach is uh, made of. Or, and then eventually if this con process continues and it goes deeper and deeper into the land, that is what, how you end up getting a bay uh, where, the, where the, uh, this piece of land will eventually will go all the way down and make a bay. Remember also, you can get deposition of sand and create a sand spit, which will cover that, cover the entrance of the bay and, and form even more pronounced of a bay feature. And so, the inter like again, interaction between deposition of shoreline formation and marine, sh marine erosion shoreline formation will end up creating the features we so much recognize as parts of our shoreline. In this picture, you see actually the mixed stage of formation, and you see everything here all at once. You see the from the early formation of notches against the surface and then those notches on an intermediate stage develop into structures like sea stacks sea arches and sea caves and sea caves of course will happen when the rock is softer than the surrounding rock arches will form when the middle of a headland is eroded more than the top of a headland by the way that reminds me if you go back on the previous picture you can see that this headland if this headland for example were to uh, start becoming uh, hit by something of a longshore uh, current, and this current will actually cut to the headland, you will get, either get a sea arch or an actual large sea stack, which could even be considered as an island later on. And so, see, that's, how, that's how sometimes you get isolated sea islands, which are not uplifted islands, but they were pieces of the continent that were not eroded as fast as the continent itself was. And so, so, so sometimes 
the marine erosion process leaves behind a large piece of rock which end, end up becoming an island as the imagine is a large sea stack basically and then you also see the headland which is resisting the erosion and that's being pushed back more and more by the by the wave action leaving behind a wave cut terrace underneath the water and if the water level goes down or this whole thing is uplifted you're gonna get this terrace formation on the top you also see here a beach and that's basically happening by the deposition of sand from all this erosion and the sand is being thrown in this in this area that's in the middle called the bay and in the beach you have the berm which is the uh, initial piling up of sand from the waves and, and the beach forms behind that which is the area that doesn't really get touched by the waves too much and so here you see all the stages in one specific area and as I know it's a drawing but it is very possible to get something like this to actually happen depending on the on the structure of the rock on that specific area the rock can actually undergo differential erosion and be in all three you can see all three stages all at once creating a very rich shoreline in terms of the diversity of the of these features also remember that you can get even more diversity if you consider the depositional changes which can also happen because of currents and waves carrying sediments across the surface of the ocean. For example, when a longshore current picks up sand from a beach and throws it to create a sand spit, as you can see up there. Another view of the sand spit from above is something like this. Longshore currents can also close off the uh, something a bay that's starting up and create a lagoon. Uh, you can see that here and also down here on the left side. And you can see that the water will have to go through the side to get inside the lagoon. You also have the bay mouth bars, which are the little sand spits which actually close the entrance to a bay, creating a connection that only an inlet will be basically connecting the bay to the outside. And you also can have formation of barrier islands of sand, uh, like this, which are created because of longshore currents as well. When those um, same longshore currents can also drag and create a new beach, far away place from the actual original place where the beach sand came from. And you can also get a formation of tombolos or connections or bridges of sand between a rock bed and an actual sea island or a barrier island. The same thing could happen here between the barrier island and uh, the rock bed as well. So you can see how the depositional variations will actually change the surface of, or the features of the, of the beach as well. And you can see the example I showed you guys with the South Beach, which created a long barrier island chain, chain which eventually created basically a lagoon uh, between um, South Florida and the island, uh, barrier islands which were uh, extended throughout the whole piece here to South Florida and that this process is actually eroding the beach so badly that you actually have to create these uh, groins to protect the beach from actual erosion so to, to catch the longshore current deposition and protect it from erosion we talked about that in a previous video as well. And you can see also how the barrier island formation can extend for miles and miles to actually create these very long stretches of, of barrier islands, all of it created by, by longshore currents. See how it's by connecting both the erosional of wave cut platforms and terraces, lagoons, barrier splits, tidal inlets, bays, tombolos, beaches. It's putting together both things that you actually end up getting the features of, of, of a beach. It's by putting together both the erosional coastline and the depositional coastline features that you end up getting what most people recognize as your beach features. So review those two videos and make sure you know everything you need to know about shoreline formation before you head to the next one. Now in the next video we're actually going to talk about how the beach for part of it forms. We're going to talk about the beach cycle in both the formation or, or and the erosion of beaches. Alright, see you guys there.